Hello and welcome to TPM's 4-Minute Friday. Today we're going to do something a little bit different, and that is uh, introduction of a, a fairly new product to uh, Autodesk, and that is the Autodesk Revit Live. Uh, what we're going to do is give an introduction of what the product is all about, how we start off the project inside of Revit, like we're currently doing with most of our projects, uh, at least in the AEC space uh, with our buildings. Uh, then we can use the Revit Live product to, uh, you know, send the model up to the cloud, have it rendered, brought the file back down, and then we can interact or have an immersive visual experience using the Revit Live application to uh, explore the building. So let's switch over to Revit and we'll take a look at this. All right, so you can see we're inside of Revit. Uh, I've got a, a building here that we're going to use for the uh, idea of working with, you know, showing how we can work with the uh, Revit Live. Nothing special about the building. I think it's a good design. It's uh, built up. It's in an in-design process. Uh, the only thing that we have to be aware of is we want the textures to be loaded. And we probably want to cite the building because all that information will be sent over to Revit Live. Uh, to actually work with the application, we simply go to the Re go live command up, here, up top here. Now, we are going to get a little bit of a warning message, uh, and it's off screen, so let me just drag it on the screen real quick. Uh, the warning message is verify your visual style. Uh, this is simply telling us that uh, Revit needs, or the Go Live Revit uh, tool needs, the realistic or ray trace visual styles to be active. The reason for that is because we have the model physically indicated uh, here, but we need the textures. So when I switch over to realistic, it takes a few extra seconds here to grab all those textures and load them into the model. And you can see the results. The trees look a little bit more realistic, and now we have brick that looks a little bit more like brick and stucco and concrete, so on and so forth. Those are the actual textures that we use for rendering. So we typically would see that when we do our Revit inside of, our rendering inside of Revit. But what we want to do is we want to take these textures as well as the model and push it up to the cloud and have Revit Live do the immersive experience for us. So we go back into our Go Live command now, and uh, you'll see that we're now ready to send the model up. One thing I want to point out is we probably want to go ahead and bring in uh, the other views that we've created. So here inside of Revit, you see we create all these camera views. So we want those to be sent up to the Revit Live and brought back down so we don't have to try to recreate those views. Once it comes down, it will automatically download it into the folder of our choice. For saving time, I'm not going to do it right now, but I will tell you the few times I've done this with this particular model, it takes about five, six, maybe seven minutes to upload, process, and come back down. So it's a very, rather quick uh, experience. What you get back, well, let's take a look at uh, Revit Live. So let's switch over to Revit Live. And now you can see this is what you get, a far better visual experience than just looking at some uh, gray tones or a black and white sketch of what we need to see, you know, of what we're trying to see. Uh, you see on the right side we have our views. These are the views that came across when we created those 12 or 13 perspective or camera views inside of Revit. And I can click on any one of these and it will simply take me to that view. And I can hold down my left mouse button and pan around to see what, what I'm seeing. The little white pins are the graphic locations on the screen of what we have over here on the right side with our views that have been created. So if I click on you know the main entrance, then it will simply pan down and zoom to that main location. Or if we go to the balcony, it comes up as well. Much more interactive experience with that as well is that once I've gone to a view, I can also use my left mouse button to pick and hold down and pan as well as use the WASD keys to navigate. So I can walk forward and moving my mouse left or right, I can walk through the building. I can you know, look to the left and use the D key to move to the right so I can actually look at equipment as I'm doing this. So again, you can interactively look up and around as you're walking through the building. Again, much like a uh, modern or a game that we're pretty much all familiar with in terms of walking through the, uh, the building. A few things we have here on the bottom, and when I go through the uh, tap and go, I'm not uh, able to go through any of the uh, partitions. However, when I pick on a view, you can see I can. Uh, if I use the fly option here, uh, this will allow me to fly through partitions or fly through walls as if they're not here, not to mention the fact that I can, in fact, go up or fly back. And again, I can use my mouse to point to whatever position I want and uh, move forward, move to the right, move left, or what have you. So again, we're able to interactively see what's going on with this building. 
There's a couple other things. We do have information tool down here. So if we pick on an object, like a window or a partition, we actually get to see a lot of that same BIM information. That's the instance properties that we get inside of Revit. So if we're reviewing this and want to know what type of family we have or type or what level it's on, what it's being used, we can see that information uh, coming through the model in that respect. We also have the ability to do our uh, sun and shadow studies. So as we move our slider for shadows, we can come back and forth with uh, what it's gonna look like and depending on what time of the year it's gonna be. As I had said earlier, the actual site or the latitude and longitude is gonna come from the Revit uh, model itself. And then finally, you also have the ability to have the lights come on at night. So once it gets dark, we can actually see what the lighting conditions would be like on a darker night when they come in. We also have the ability to turn off these pins so we get a little bit cleaner screen here in terms of a presentation. So again, these views can be set up, presented, interact with to see what the model is going to look like. And then finally, uh, you're most likely going to want to have your consultants, clients, or other stakeholders to be able to view this. And up here under the publish command, this will publish or create a set of files that are compressed that can be given to a client they simply uncompress or quick consult it. They can uncompress this. Uh, it will then be create an executable. And they simply double click on that one executable. And that one executable will have this file as well as the viewer and everything that's been created. They don't have to download a separate file. They don't have to download a separate viewer. You can give them one compressed file that has everything they need so they can interactively uh, navigate through the building and see what your design process is design actually looks like uh, rather than trying to visualize it in their head and they might not feel comfortable doing that. So again, a great tool to be able to present those visualizations and immerse ex uh, an immersive experience with the user so they can interactively walk through and uh, be familiar with the building. So there you go. That's uh, what we've got for our four minute Friday. Hopefully this will give you an idea of what you've got available to us. The tools are out there. Uh, the Revit Live uh, application is part of the AEC collections. So for those of you that have AEC collections um, as part of your subscription or maintenance, you do have access to this capability right now. So there you go. I hope that gives you an idea of what you can do. Hopefully some of you got this on this tool, spend a little bit of time and be able to do better presentations and review your designs a little bit better than maybe you have in the past. Thank you much and we'll talk to you later.